At the time of the first Death Star's completion, it was the largest single object ever built, and struck fear across the galaxy. This video explains the early beginnings of what became known as the Death Star, and how the project progressed from a canon and legends perspective, with some of the elements the same and others taking a different approach. We begin with what we know in Legends in 29 BBY leading up to 0 BBY, when the first Death Star was completed. Nearly 30 years before the first Death Star became fully operational as a battle station, with the capability of destroying an entire planet, an idea of creating a battle planetoid consisting of a huge turbo laser had been a vision of the starship designer known as Wraith Senar. Coming from the well-respected Senar family of shipbuilders, and despite his doubts about a theoretical spherical battle station concept, Wraith Senar presented his concept plans to his friend, none other than Wilhoff Tarkin, who was a security force commander in the Outer Rim territories. Later that year, Tarkin eventually presented the concept plans as his own to the Republic's Supreme Chancellor, Sheev Palpatine, who was pleased by them and acted swiftly to appointing Bevel Levelisk to begin the necessary advances in hypermatter science. In the initial stages of his research, Lemelisk and his team of scientists gained creative license from the Trade Federation battleships, known as the Luca Hulk class cargo freighters, which blockaded the planet of Naboo in 33 BBY. The spherical command center, surrounded by the freighter's ring of hangar bays, helped them understand the compact hypermatter annihilator reactor. Hypermatter was an exotic form of fuel used in the hypermatter annihilators of starships and immense battle stations. Its unusual properties allowed vessels to produce phenomenal amounts of energy necessary for their operation. Lemelis then took his architectural plans to the planet of Geonosis, where he looked closely with the Geonosians to resolve some structural and power supply issues which delayed their progress for several years. The weapon schematics were held in the Geonosian laboratory until the beginning of the Clone Wars in 22 BBY between the Separatists and the Old Republic. The Separatist leader, Count Dooku, fearing the schematics would fall into the hands of the clone army, took the plans to Darth Sidious on Coruscant to ensure their secrecy. By the time of the Galactic Empire's rise to power in 19 BBY, after the end of the Clone Wars and during the demise of the Old Republic, Wilhoff Tarkin had now been elevated to become the Empire's first sector governor with the title of Moff. With his newfound political influence, Tarkin created the Tarkin Doctrine for increasing security and ensuring order within the Empire. Sheev Palpatine, who by now had proclaimed himself the Emperor, approved Tarkin's doctrine and appointed him as the first Grand Moff. He was then given charge over the superweapons construction, which was moved to the Horrors system, close to the prison world of Despery. While Lemelis managed the construction over the next 19 years, the secret project's progress suffered many issues resulting in lengthy delays, including a shortage of labor, unexpected technical problems, and sabotage. Wookiees were enslaved to fill the labour shortages required, and Lemelis pressed on. To ensure the superlaser would operate, in 3 BBY a prototype of the Death Star was constructed inside the Moor installation as a testbed, and was protected by Admiral Natasi Dala's Imperial forces. The testing was a success, and Lemelis eventually delivered the superweapon, before moving on to work on several torpedo spheres, which were a fraction of the size, at just over a mile in diameter. In canon, the story was somewhat different, but with key similarities. In 22 BBY, at the very beginning of the Clone Wars, and during an arms race between the Separatists and the Republic, a secret concept design for a moon-sized battle station was devised by the Separatists. Once again, the Separatist leader, Count Dooku, took the plans to Darth Sidious on Coruscant to ensure their secrecy. By 21 BBY, the strategic advisory cell, overseeing the ongoing effort against the Separatists during the Clone Wars, was where the birth of the Death Star project emerged. A member of the Corps of Engineers and the coordinator of the top secret Republic Special Weapons Group, Orson Krennic, convinced the Republic's Vice Chancellor Masamida. He knew a scientist called Galen Erso, whose research on kyber crystals could be used to supply massive amounts of power which could be weaponized. Krennic managed to convince a prisoner, the captured Separatist Geonosian leader Poggle the Lesser, to assist in the construction of the battle station. The deal was in return for his freedom to reunite the Geonosian hive who were in danger of infighting from the power vacuum left behind from his capture. The Geonosians began making significant progress on constructing the Death Star, which soon went from resembling a giant metal ring to a gyroscopic shape. However, this soon led to his betrayal by ordering his hive to dismantle the fledgling battle station and return to the Separatists, creating the first major setback for the project. In 19 BBY, the Galactic Republic had transferred into the Galactic Empire, and Kronik had set up Project Celestial Power which publicly aimed to provide sustainable energy for worlds ravaged by the war. 
In secret, the project's research was developing the technology required to create the Death Star superweapon. The project's research consisted mainly of researching kyber crystals and harnessing the massive amounts of energy they produced. And Krennic ensured Galen Erso was the leading scientist in this area of research. In 17 BBY, during the project's development, a devastating accident occurred at the Celestial Power Facility on the planet Malpass. The destruction of the entire facility and killing thousands of the planet's inhabitants was caused when a kyber energy output failed to be properly contained. However, Galen Erso's suspicious wife, Lyra, convinced her husband to flee the Empire, realising his research had been used to be weaponized. The Erso settled hidden away on the remote planet of Lamu to live a peaceful life. The work on the Death Star Superlaser Array would once again be stalled for a further four years due to the Erso's disappearance. In 13 BBY, Krennic eventually discovered the Erso family and forced Galen to assist in the construction of the Death Star. Over the years leading up to Zero BBY, there had been further delays for Krennic to overcome, but eventually the Death Star was completed and firstly tested upon the unsuspecting city of Jeddah. So in canon, the Death Star eventually took 20 years to complete, while the technology was developed and a huge amount of labour and materials created many setbacks. That concludes the Death Star's origins. If you are interested in more Imperial videos, please check out my channel. For future Imperial Explained videos, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and as always, long live the Empire.